if you're not sick by now by all the new GMTs, let me show you this one. With the introduction of NH34 by Seiko, the new GMT started popping up as we say in Czech like mushrooms after the rain. Needless to say that Seiko hit a jackpot when they had the incredible idea of repurposing the day complication on one of their already existing movement into independently adjustable GMT hand. And voila, new movement was here with already proven history of reliability. It instantly became a hit. Being used by pretty much every micro brand there is, plus of course by Seiko themselves, you could see the GMTs everywhere past two years. And especially in the beginning you could hear phrases from all around like, oh, we can finally get a mechanical GMT under $500. And I was like, wait a minute, by the time I already had a mechanical GMT in my collection that I got a lot cheaper. Okay, it's not exactly fair to say that. I got this Komandersky GMT for about 130 euros. And by the time of making these videos, you can still find them for around that price on eBay. Hence a lot under that $500 mark. But this is as far from true GMT as it gets. With the NH34 being what you would call Collard's GMT, having independently adjustable GMT hand, and recently introduced Mayotas 9075 being what you would call true GMTs, which is preferred by a lot of collectors, having independently adjustable local hour hand, this doesn't have independently adjustable anything, except for the bezel. Now when you think about it, it's a genius move. Adding one more gear for the 24 hour hand doesn't really add much complexity to the movement that is already notorious for its dependability. The second time zone tracking only happens here with the help of 24 hour bezel. Which, yeah, it only limits you to track one additional time zone, but let's be real. How many of us would really need to track more than one additional time zone at a time? Uh, I don't. See, we watch collectors tend to be a weird kind. We tend to convince ourselves that we need something even though we don't really need it. For instance, for me, it was super hard not to convince myself that I need another GMT. I have no real use for it. I work for an international company, but the other countries my company works with are in the same time zone. I do travel for work, but I do travel in those countries my company works with, which have the same time zone or at most one hour difference. No real use for GMT. Damn it. And then I go for holidays once or twice a year, where I would use the GMT watch, but you know, my holidays tend to be a bit active and I would generally prefer to have something like this G-Shock on my hand. This year was different. This year I went for holidays to Vietnam and I told myself, you know what, I'm gonna use the only GMT watch I have and I'm gonna use it the way it was intended to. I'm gonna trust all those Vostok reviews saying that this is the toughest mechanical watch there is, that it was made with abuse in mind. And I'm glad I did. Yes, I admit, it would be totally easier to have true GMT with independently adjustable hour hand. But see, I only got to change the time before we touched the ground. At least I got to sync the time because although this watch being notorious for how tough it is, it's not exactly famous for how accurate it is. Because it's not. And that was it for a couple of weeks. And then I only had to change the time back when I was leaving. So it didn't really bother me. Now saying that this watch was developed with abuse in mind is actually an understatement. Was the company was established by a married couple that started making these watches for Russian army and they haven't really changed since the 60s. And they actually had to come up with some really clever solution to the demands that army had. For instance, the crown that feels almost broken when you unscrew it or this weird dorky case bag. It's all weird, but it's made with purpose in mind. The wobbly crown is actually designed not to stress the stem while wearing the watch or while being on a moving vehicle. The weird two-piece case bag is actually designed to open the watch as many times as you need to service it or adjust it without compromising the rubber gasket underneath. And even the crystal, although being just acrylic and super easy to scratch, it's made in a way that the more pressure you expose the watch to, the more weatherproof it is. It's simply genius. All that made the watch perform flawlessly on my travel. Swimming in the sea, hiking, a bit of drinking, and most importantly the motorbike. It spent Three weeks in vibrations, dust, mud, rain, sweat, everything you can think of. And it just happily ticked away. Let's have a closer look at it, because for a budget mechanical GMT, I think there is a lot to like here. Unlike other Vostok models, thanks God, this one is su actually surprisingly sensible. There are no tanks or airplanes or parachutes on the dial. The dial is matte, 
a bit of a structure to it. Nothing dramatic, almost monochromatic. Nice. It's all simple and functional and I gotta say very pretty. Except for the small secondhand subdial on the rather unusual place at 10 o'clock. It's all very traditional almost. Very little text, just the name of the model. This military badge under the pinion in red and number of jewels. Everything is printed with numerals on evens with loom. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even bother to mention it because the loom disappears faster than salary from my bank account. The handset is also very simple, functional. Arrow R hand, pencil minute hand, and the red GMT hand, binding it to the military badge under the pinion. The hands are correctly sized, you immediately know which one is which, and they don't feel cheap, except for the loom. Like I mentioned, the dial is covered by acrylic crystal. And although not being one of my favorite materials to use, it's just beautiful to look at. It's really heavily domed and it's got this incredible vintage vibe and it feels right at home here. Yes, it's super easy to scratch, but yes, it's super easy to restore with a little bit of polywatch or even toothpaste. Then there is the friction bidirectional 24 hour bezel. It's not exactly high tech, but it's functional. The numbers and hour markers are engraved and filled with black color, except for the um, loom pip. The action is smooth in both sides and yes, you could totally knock it off out of place, but it didn't really happen to me on the vacation. And look at the case and finishing on it. That looks more than all right for the price, right? It's very fine all around. No high polish chamfered edges, no fancy shapes. All is angular, all is simple, brushed and tooly. And I gotta say, I like what I'm seeing here. The dimensions are not bad either. Perfectly wearable on my almost seven inches, almost. Yeah, for the price, it cannot be all good, right? The watch comes with this bracelet. Trust me, it's probably the most disgusting thing I ever touched and that's saying something. You should throw it away, bury it, melt it into something else and just completely forget about ever seeing it in the first place. It comes in a really cheap feeling plastic box, but for someone who grew up in the post-communist country in the 90s, it's pretty cool. I put the watch on the heavy duty spring bars and this absolutely gorgeous Marine National single straps for CNS. The match made in heaven. You probably all know that Vostok makes in-house movements that are notorious for its reliability. This one comes with hand winding, no hacking, 32 jewels and 31 hours of power reserve. It's not exactly fancy, but it's not bad to look at either. It has an incredible 10 years service interval that nobody will ever keep. And I bet the watch will be still running. So where does that leave us? You know, this brand has almost cult following fans. I can't say I'm one of them. But I'm real fan of this particular model. Yeah, the thumbnail was a bit of a clickbait. It isn't a true GMT. But it's incredibly robust, mechanical, affordable and good looking GMT. And for the way I need to use it every once in a while on a vacation, it's as true as it gets. You can buy this watch new with a new design that personally I think look disgusting. Plus, I'm not exactly thrilled about the idea of buying anything new from and directly supporting Russia obviously. But I gotta say, if you like Vostok for what it is, yeah, go ahead, get a second hand one. I can only recommend it. It's really good. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, I thank you for watching this far. Please feel free to leave a comment with what could be improved for next time. And maybe in the next video. My name is Karel and this is Watch Watch. Cheers.